Hello, Dr. Badijo here. We're going to learn about how to automate masking here in Agisoft Metashape. Um, I've got an image up for you of our object. We have our Inca ceramic vessel, and then below it we have its turntable with a marker palette, which has these markers on it that'll allow for Metashape to actually automatically register those positions, which with a few more steps, we can quickly add scale to our object. Um, but for this tutorial, we're just actually learning how to automate masking um, using a background image. So the way we do that is we actually have to open up one of these images in Paint. So we're going to go back to our folder where everything's kind of saved. And we're going to go to one of our Photos folders and right click one of the images, any of them. It doesn't matter which one. And we're going to go to Open With Paint. And Paint is just something that comes along with Windows. Um, see down here on the bottom right, I'm actually scaling this back so I can see the entire image here. That just helps you know, making sure that you're getting all the edges. Um, but what you're going to do now is you're going to tap on the screen, tap on the image, just right wherever you want, then hit Control A. And as you can see, it's popped up to select everything. And then you're going to hit Delete. Just hit the delete button on your keyboard and it gets rid of everything. You're going to hit file, save as JPEG or whatever uh, similar image format that you're using for running your photos in Metashape. And then inside of the main project folder for that project, um, which is going to be right here, you're going to save it as a different file name and it's going to say background. Now it has to be exactly, you got to know exactly how you're actually spelling this here. So I'm going to use lowercase b a c k g r o u n d background dot jpeg. I'm going to hit save and let's just go ahead and search for it. Make sure it's there. I'm going to go in here and I had put it in the main project folder. Oh, and there it is. Background jpeg. Okay, we can close out paint. We don't need that anymore. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this background file to help mask in Metashape. The way to do that is by doing the entire batch in the entire photo set here. So first, to make sure you don't have masks already, already on your photos, and also to show you this little toggle button, you can click over here on the Show Masks on and off, and it'll actually show you the masks that might actually already exist in your photo set. If it's brand new, you won't have anything here, and it'll say no mask on every single image. But as you'll see, we're going to toggle it so it, it's on the uh, showing masks side of things. As you'll see, as we're running it, you'll actually see the masks um, generate. So on any of these images, right click, masks, import masks, Make sure that it says method from, from background, operation, replacement, file name template. Make sure it says exactly how you wrote it for the other file, background.jpg. And let's just leave our tolerance at 40. And instead of just doing the one camera we selected here, we're going to do all the cameras in this chunk. Hit OK. It's going to prompt you to identify which folder has that background file that you just created. So we're, we know it's in our Inca folder here for the actual ceramic vessel. And notice how it doesn't show up. The computer just wants you to identify which folder contains that background file. So we're OK where we are now. It actually has that folder name in there. We're going to hit Select Folder, and it's going to start generating masks. If you look over on the right hand side of the screen, you can see that it's blanking out the green screen from our turntable shoot. So we're going to go ahead and let that run until it finishes. All right, there we go. Everything is masked now. Um, and as you can see here in this kind of darker color, that's what's been masked out. And if you want to, you can actually click through your images and, and kind of explore how much of it was actually masked out based on the tolerance that you input. 
but what you will notice is like this is nice and clean there's no holes that need to be masked out um, just manually but if you go to one of these where you have these handles you may actually need to mask out the green in between the handles if your threshold your uh, tolerance wasn't wasn't actually high enough the way you would do that is you would come up here to your selection tool with with the image open just like this you go to your selection tool go to magic wand and then just touch the green space in between you see how it starts to actually let me zoom in so you can see this it creates a bunch of vertices connected by lines it's going ahead and just masking out that green part but it's not quite masked yet you actually have to either right click and hit add selection we'll do it there just so I show you and now it's masked out there or let's do this side you have to hit control shift a boom and it masks it out now if you're getting bad results on your texture after your your model is finished my advice is go through look for these more complex spots um, highlight them and manually mask them out just like I'm doing right here yep and that usually takes care of the issue so um, obviously that might take a little while we have 96 photos to work through not all of them have the same same angle where these little handles are are showing the green background behind it uh, but it may take some time but in general if this is more of a simple object that didn't have a lot of these these weird occlusions we may actually um, save us a lot of time doing this manually by just having it iterate 96 times over so that's pretty much it for masking. Um, just remember that when you do mask, you're actually saving the computer a little bit of time and headache and, and making sure the computer understands only to look for the pixels that have not been masked out and use those pixels to actually run the alignment and um, you know create that dense cloud and then of course the rest of the, the texture too. So thank you for listening.